Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Marissa Chodden from MLC Tech and with the launch of the 40 series super right around the corner we finally have some leaked pricing details on these new GPUs coming out. So sit back and relax as we dive into what we have in store for the 40 super series. So this month we're expected to get three new GPUs in what is already a heavily jam-packed lineup of GPUs. The leaks that we're covering today are thanks to Megasize GPU over on X, who has proven to be a reliable source in the past, so hopefully these figures stay true. We will have official confirmation on these prices at CES next week when Nvidia will officially announce and launch these GPUs, but for now let's take a look at the pricing we have in front of us today. So the 4080 Super is expected to have an MSRP of $999, pretty interesting there. And if we jump over to the 4070 Ti Super, that will be $799 MSRP and the 4070 Super will launch at $599 US dollars. And yes, the names for some of those GPUs can be quite a mouthful, for example, Ti Super. Uh, I don't know what the video was thinking with these naming schemes, but TI Super Duper Combo Wombo GPUs is, I guess, the new trend in the market. At least in the video, adds the word super to let you know their graphics cards are good, opposed to the amount of X's in a naming scheme that we've seen from the likes of AMD, where more X's mean better graphics card. At least Nvidia has the balls to straight up say, this is super. But the pricing of these GPUs are very interesting and not what I was expecting at all. Taking a look at the RX 4080 Super that has an MSRP of 999, whereas the original 4080 had a launch MSRP of 1200 USD, which when we look online for current pricing of the 4080, we can see that add and board partner cards are being sold of upwards of $1,800, which is absolutely crazy. But the most interesting thing is how this card undercuts the original 4080. So it will be very interesting to see how that will affect prices across the board in the GPU market. Moving over to the 4070 Ti Super, that is expected to have the same MSRP as the original non-Super 4070 Ti with an MSRP of $799. At the moment, if we look at the current pricing for adding board partner cards for the 4070 Ti, cards are being sold from around this MSRP all the way up to 1000 US dollars. And the same story can be said for the 4070 Super, with that launching at an MSRP of 599, that is going to have the same MSRP of the original 4070. You may be asking yourself, how do these GPUs differ from the non Super variants? Well, let's break down the specs and the expected performance that we can get out of these GPUs. The changes in some cases are more significant than just a minor increase in core clock speeds. Taking a look at the 4080 to the 40 Super, with a $200 cut in MSRP, we're getting a slight increase in the CUDA core count, but it's still running the AD103 core. But with this, we're seeing slightly higher clock speeds, and there is also a slight increase to memory bandwidth, which is great to see as we're getting a minor spec bump, while also that decrease in MSRP. More performance for less money, I am all for that. Taking a look at the 40 Ti Super, this is the most interesting when it comes to changes to this graphics card. It's launching at the same MSRP, but there is an increase in VRAM from 12 to 16, very good to see. And the actual core of the GPU is entirely different. The original 4070 Ti ran the AD104 core, whereas the 4070 Ti Super is getting upgraded to a cut down 4080 core, that being the AD103275. The core frequency on this GPU will remain the same, however there's going to be a pretty significant increase in memory bandwidth, which is super cool to see. And then jumping over to the 4070 to the 4070 Super, now this is quite a minor upgrade here. It's launching at the same MSRP and there's a pretty good bump in the CUDA cores on this core, but it is still running the same AD104. And this AD104 is just a cut below the original 4070 Ti's core. The memory on the other hand remains exactly the same with no improvements to memory bandwidth or speed. So on this GPU, very minor increases here and here, but the fact that it's still launching for the same MSRP is good to see. I am very glad to see the shift in pricing from Nvidia. 
and it is the sign of the times that no one wants to spend over a thousand US dollars and upwards of almost two grand on the 80 class GPU. And with tough competition from AMD, such as the RX 1700 XTX being a great value for money around this price point, it makes sense that Nvidia will want to bring out a GPU that will be more appealing to the general consumer and also be tough competition to AMD. We have seen lots of reports of the 4080 simply just not selling too well compared to the rest of the product stack. I highly doubt we're going to go back to the times of the 1080 Ti anytime soon, that being the top tier GPU launching for around £600. I highly doubt we're going to see those prices return to, but I'm glad that the market's slowly coming back to its senses to the big GPU craze a few years ago. So let's take a look at some real world expected game performance that we can get out of these GPUs. It is expected that the 4070 Ti will be very close and slightly trailed behind the 4080 and the 4070 Super trailing just ever so behind the original 4070 Ti. So at the end of the day, I am all for getting an increase in performance for either a slightly cheaper price or the same price. I don't want to see a trend of GPUs like we saw with the 4060 where they were bringing out a new GPU and charging more money for the GPU for the same level of performance of the t of what we saw the previous generation. So I am glad that we're moving away from this trend and finally seeing an increase in performance to what we are actually paying. The biggest question I have at the moment is how will this affect the current GPUs on the market? Now Nvidia has no official plans at the moment to make an official price cut on any of the pre-existing GPUs they have out on the market. Is their plan to do what they did with the 20 Super Series where they slowly made all, all the non-Super cards fade away from shops and only have the new Super variants available to buy? In all likelihood that is what's going to happen but in the meantime while these cards come to market and Nvidia wants to clear out the remainder of their stock of the non-Super variants we could see some fantastic deals available to snatch up, though that's only going to be for a limited time while they, clear, while they clear the last of their inventory. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this will affect sales of the super variants and also the pricing of what's already out there. Keep your eyes peeled because you may be able to snag a really good deal in the next coming few months. Official details of these GPUs will be revealed over CS this week, so keep your eyes out for the NVIDIA keynote and these cards will officially launch and be available to purchase on January 17th with adding board variants being available the very next day. So I'm very excited to see how these new GPUs will form when we finally have them and then we can actually evaluate them to determine is the price and structure worth it at the moment or does more need to be done in the price and structure of these GPUs to actually justify spending that much money on them? Well, only time would tell and I'm super looking forward to checking them out when they finally launch. But I hope this is a good sign of the times of finally prices coming down to somewhat more sensible levels when it comes to price to performance. One can only hope, but it's got me super excited for the future of what's to come in this space. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Will you be interested in picking up a 40 Super Series this year? Or are you holding out to the 50 Series or hoping you can snag a very good deal on a non-Super variant when the prices hopefully drop later this year? Or are you still looking at going over to Team Red with AMD and see if the launch of these GPUs will have a pretty good effect on the pricing on the current RDNA 3 graphics cards? Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments. Anyway, I have been Madison Charlton from MLC Tech. If you've liked today's video, make sure to give it a like and maybe subscribe for more content like this in the future. And I hope to see you in another video soon. Goodbye.